when people have been lied to, have been given false information because of uh, their race, their religion, or one of the characteristics, that's a damage. That's a real damage emotionally for them uh, as well as uh, uh, a, a damage to our society. I have never, ever heard anyone speak so candidly about injustice. I don't think you could find somebody who better reflects the concept of diversity and inclusion. Uh, that's really what Cliff was all about. Cliff is um, just a, a very, very smart man on the issue of fair housing. I don't think there's anybody in Detroit and Michigan, maybe in the country, that knows more than him. But beyond that, he's a person who just cares tremendously for people. He had this amazing way of making people feel included and needed and important. Here you had a gentleman who saw those riots and didn't flee. Cliff Shrupp recognized that part of his calling was to stay here and do everything that he could to make sure that the community and the neighborhoods were restored. He did it because it was the right thing to do. And that was what was really important to Cliff. He was so intent upon making sure that he looked out for what mattered. And in his mind, I think, that meant restoring a vibrant community where truly, you know, Martin Luther King's thoughts could be sort of fulfilled, having a dream that we could all live together in peace and harmony. He was um, unflinching. Uh, I think that many of these issues around civil rights are around courage. You have to confront uh, power. Often what happens with regard to discrimination is that it is at times the, uh, the government, it is at times uh, people who are well resourced, uh, and you have to be ready to stand up to them. Cliff's you know, theory was you need to find a purpose in your life that you recognize as an important one. And while there were a lot of facets of institutionalized racism in this country, you know, you couldn't battle them all and, and be effective. So you had to choose one that was dear to your heart and that had a significant impact on people. And he chose housing. He was on the battlefield. He recognized it. And, you know, he was a warrior without any actual weaponry but his weaponry was the Fair Housing Center. What is so important about the Fair Housing Center is that it stood for fair housing, but it impacted fair housing by um, doing what is called testing. And so that if there was a complaint that a uh, landlord was discriminating, they ran a, a program for many, many years where they would send out testers, um, a uh, white person uh, trying to uh, obtain housing, and then compare that to the um, results if a, if a black person or um, any other protected group. Cliff took this testing and, and fair housing litigation concept that we were working on and said, I think this is where there's, there's a real need. He worked in, uh, in developing a program for training fair housing testers. And what's really significant is that there is a number of federal court case decisions that recognize the value of, of objective fair housing testers and specifically pointing out the, the uh, Fair Housing Center of Metropolitan Detroit as a model. And I think that was due to Cliff Schrupp. Cliff's going to be missed for many reasons for um, all that he has contributed, for the kind of person he was. Um, he was a fighter, uh, but then he also had a, an, an ease to him, a, a, almost a gentility that uh, was uh, a, a perfect balance to the fact that he fought for these important issues. The legacy of Clifford Shrupp is going to last for a long time. And the best way to honor that legacy, I think, is to follow his sort of mantra, which is, you know, the, the true joy in life is being used 
for a purpose that you recognize as a mighty one. And Cliff recognized that racial justice issues was a mighty purpose. We have lost a great man, but through his children, both of whom are as dedicated, I believe that he instilled within, the, within them great vision. And I wanna very quickly just thank them for sharing him with us, because often the families have to take a second fiddle when people are as powerful. And so we've lost someone, but I'm hoping that those of us that are you know, intent upon trying to make an impression, trying to make a statement, trying to right wrongs, I'm hoping that uh, he instilled within us that, shall we say, continuity of spirit. We need to remember how uh, racially unfair this country has been and continues to be. Uh, we're not going to correct those situations unless we are honest about our history and about where we are currently. <laughs>